corner. Today I have Chinaza Maneja, and she's pretty much my sister, y'all. Like, ignore the last name. Yeah, we're family. We're, we're blood. I don't know what, I mean, they just jumped in different homes, and that was what happened. But we're blood relatives, like, I kid you not. So today we're talking about standards. Should Christian women have harsh standards? If so, how harsh should they be? If so, what should they avoid? If so, what should they look for? So today we're going to discuss all these things on the show. Okay, so you basically had an experience with having too high of standards, so people say, um, what is your take on a Christian woman having standards and sticking to those standards despite the fact that society may say, oh, you're too picky or you're shallow or whatever the case may be. What do you feel about standards and how strong should they be? Well, I think many people would consider me a standard Nazi because I set standards high and I plan on sticking to them for as long as it takes. I think Christian women, especially you know myself being a Christian woman, should have standards. Um, I think it's important to have standards because if not, you'll end up being misguided, you'll end up yeah. falling for the wrong guy, settling. you'll end up settling, mm -hmm. you'll end up being mm -hmm. miserable. Yeah. And so for me personally, I don't think that my standards are unrealistic, mm -hmm. uh, but many people will probably tell me that they are, only because I'm so adamant about sticking to them. And yeah. two things that I'm looking for and that I'm not going to give up on is a man that has a faith in God. Of course. And this is not a nominal Christian that I'm mm -hmm. looking for. I'm looking for a guy that really loves God. Yeah. I think my dad calls them. He says, you have two types of people. You have Bible believers and you have Bible carriers. Mm. Personally, I'm looking for a Bible believer because personally, I am a Bible believer. And so with that in mind, I really believe it's important to not be yeah. unequally yoked, you know? And then mm. secondly, this is where the possibility of being shallow comes in, <laughs> um, which I don't think so, but I'm biased because it's me. But I am looking for a guy that I'm physically attracted to. And usually with my past dating experiences, I usually get one or the other, but I never seem to get both. And that's where, you know, the frustration sits in and that's where the temptation maybe to settle sets in, but we'll go into that a little later. So yes. Okay, so how how deep into attraction should you be with the person you want to be with? Like should it be like, oh my gosh, she has everything, he's six foot four, he brown skin, chocolate. <laughs> like how how strong should the uh, the attraction be between you and the person that you could potentially marry? Um, I think attraction should be um I would say it should be pretty strong. You shouldn't let it necessarily consume your every thought mm -hmm. and your every, yeah, you shouldn't let it mm -hmm. just overshadow what you're really looking for, which mm -hmm. is a man that has good phys uh, inner attributes, yeah. that has good qualities, a man that will be there to help raise your children the right way. So you shouldn't, it should be a balance in a sense, but at the same time, I don't think it should be overlooked. Mm -hmm. I know many people will tell me, you know, looks are not everything, and they're absolutely right. Looks aren't everything, but they are a important component, for me mm -hmm. at least. Um, I think when, like even when guys try to approach me, most of the time when they're approaching me, it's just based on the physical because they don't know me. True. Um, and so they're attracted to me and they're interested in getting to know me, but in the same token, what I've been told is that women shouldn't have that same liberty or at least, you know, Christian women shouldn't have that same liberty. And I think that's really unfair. Um, I think when it gets to the point of unrealisticness is when you have a list that's unattainable yeah. or when you have a list that is so rigid. But I think when you get to the point where you're like, okay, you meet a good guy and let's say you have a standard that he has to be 6'4 and he's 6'3 and a half and you completely dismiss them, of course that's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. But even for me, I don't even have a, a set type. Yeah. When I meet that person and I'm attracted to them, then, you know, and they have these qualities that I'm looking for, then we go from there. Mm -hmm. But I don't have like a laundry list of this, this, and this. Yeah. So. And I think definitely like not making attractiveness the like ultimatum in a sense, but it definitely being a baseline. Yeah. That it's important um, not to base it off of him being, you know, like we said, the dream man. And really just, I think, picking and choosing what you may have, you know, listed and what may truly be shallow. Like, I know I used to have the most unrealistic standards. Like, oh, I want to marry a basketball player with millions of dollars. He got to be this, he got to be that. And it's like... The more and more, of course, after, I, after Christ, and I was like, okay, cool, I don't actually care for that, because honestly, he could be a basketball player and still treat me like trash. The standard should still be set, regardless of 
how old you're getting or you know whether you want to have kids early whether your whole family members are getting married and you're just the last person whether you've been the bridesmaid a hundred times and you're tired of it like always a bridesmaid never a bride literally like if you just feel like you're just sick and you're tired that's not a reason to give up that's not a reason to give into the temptation of settling and being unequally yoked like i've discussed this on my channel before and i just can't emphasize the importance of being equally yoked like man and can i testify please testify well personally you know i have you know as a christian as a human you constantly in my opinion you have periods of progression and regression and so even with having standards i've had moments where i felt like i was bored and i wanted to entertain a god that maybe wasn't as mm -hmm. christian and i end up you know with emotional heartbreak if yeah. you will i end up being unnecessarily attached to mm -hmm. a guy that is not for me mm -hmm. or sometimes on the other end of the spectrum i'm like okay maybe you know looks you know, maybe I'll just forgo this whole idea about looks mm -hmm. again because I'm bored or whatever the case may be. And it just doesn't work, you know. So you'll find yourself in a rut. You'll find yourself with unnecessary yeah. baggage. Like, yeah. it's just not necessary. It's not. Yeah. I'm not encouraging complacency because as a woman of God, you should always be praying. Yeah. But at the same time, save yourself the heartache. Save yourself the heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Just just have standards. And if a guy that approaches you does not meet those standards then that's not the guy for you. You're not going to miss the person that you're looking for. Yeah. If you believe in God, you should believe in the fact that God is faithful. Yeah. And he hasn't forgotten about you. I'm preaching to myself right now, y'all. Okay? <laughs> Come on. I'm preaching to myself first. <laughs> to me first. So, no, that's so real because I feel like... Um, Sometimes we like to bend the rules like oh, well, I mean he sort of kind of loves God, but like he sort of kind of don't like I mean like he work in progress Like he goes to church. He goes to church. That's it. That's it. That's all you got. No, that's not That's not that now that now that my sister will not sustain your family now no. that in your marriage i mean it just goes to church just to go i guess like occasionally it's culturally like you know built into him to wake up Easter on sunday, sunday morning christmas that's not you know that's that would definitely be a i mean more so deal breaker i'd say like okay that's all you do go to church that's it like you you don't really you implement into your life like there's some things that you just can't you know let fly. Yeah, you just can't compromise on some things. You can't. Okay, uh, I have to travel. You don't. I mean, you will die. You will die. If he doesn't travel with you. You will die. You know. I like crawfish, and I'm really hoping that my husband thoroughly enjoys crawfish because it's important. But if he doesn't, <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna teach him. You're like, <laughs> gonna like crawfish. <laughs> if you're out there, and you're listening. You're gonna like. No, I'm joking. But yeah. No, but yeah. That's my I mean. That's that's literally how it is. That that wouldn't be a deal breaker. Like, oh, you don't like crawfish. Like, so I'm not speaking of those kind of standards where it's like, oh my gosh, he don't make the checklist. Like, one is off, half a point is off, and he gotta go. No, like in the sense of huge things. Like, okay, I don't know if he can leave me. That might be a problem just because of the fact that he's supposed to lead, you know. So those are where the standards come into play. I feel like when, as Christian women, when we feel like, oh, I can make him the one, or we, when we get lonely, um, it turns into this whole. Don't forget, make him the one. How? How? We create him. Wow. But um, I feel like we get lonely and we're like, oh, well, you know, he's cute. He has everything else except for the Jesus part. And I can just, you know, I can make it. Like, I can make it work, you know. But no, you can't make it work because as a Christian woman, your life is, is centered with Christ. Your life is centered as Christ as the middle. So it's like anything that concerns you concerns Christ. And anything that concerns what you want to do is going to involve Christ. So how are you then going to live a life yoked to a man that doesn't really care for or is not really aiming at trying to get to know or believe in or faithfully live out this christian walk so it is it is a weird place to be it's really an uncomfortable place to be i've been in it before i've been in equally yoked and i've talked about it on my channel before um it wasn't fun a waste of the not a waste but it was more so emotionally draining oh God, don't try to <laughs> don't sorry. don't play it like he out there listening no <laughs> no but um but it was emotionally draining it was mentally draining it was spiritually draining and honestly like like when I see a sister in Christ or anyone trying to get into an uh, unequally yoked relationship, I'm just like, I'm just so worried. You had to have me. I was like, I'm so worried about you. Like I just, I just don't. I just, you just know, you just know it's not gonna end right. And I mean, I wouldn't be a sister in Christ if I wasn't honest and been like, I'm worried about you and yeah. I'm praying for you because yeah. clearly you can't hear through the through, through the thick them thick earwax buds in your, in your ear, but. 
it was, you know, it's definitely one of those things where you're like, man, I've been there before and I really don't want another woman going down this path because it's not fun. So I definitely always speak, speak out about being unequally yoked because it's so real and it's so um, detrimental to our spiritual walk because it can make or break us literally. Like, I think that scripture that you sent me um, about Solomon. Where, yeah, one after Kings mm -hmm. 11. Yes, I recently read that chapter and it was so eye-opening Kings chapter 11 mm -hmm. the whole thing read the whole thing and it's just about Solomon who started off with like a zeal for God yeah and by the end of his life he ended up being carried away and swept away by his wives you know by his bays that were not you know of the same faith yeah and, he, and God specifically warned him in the chapter to not intermarry mm -hmm. he said don't intermarry because in the end they're gonna lead you astray yeah and as Christians we like to kind of assume subconsciously that we're above influence but we're not not. Mm -hmm. We are creatures that are literally made to be moldable. Yeah. We're made from dirt, you know? Yeah. And so with that in mind, I think it's really important just for you. If you don't even end up getting married in life, if it never happens, at least you can die with your faith intact. Yeah. At least you can die mm -hmm. knowing that you have still served God yeah. and that you weren't taken captive by a good looking brother. You exactly. know what I mean? Because it's not it's not worth it. It's yeah. not worth your whole walk, like not to get preachy, but I mean he ended his life you know, worshiping other gods and many people believe Solomon didn't even make heaven and this is a wise man of God yeah. who had an encounter with God face to face, you know, and so it's just important to kind of do the Heisman on every God that threatens to, you know, dull your light and take away your your your, your godly inhibitions. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. all. So yeah, that's basically our talk on standards. Should Christian women have standards? They should. Yes. How high should they be? High. <laughs> Mountain tops that reach the heavens. High. <laughs> they should be pretty high. Uh, but not unrealistic. But not unrealistic. But high. High. Not unrealistic though, but high. Um, and yeah, so I thank you so much for sharing bits of your story on the channel. I'm sure what you said has blessed someone out there. I know this is going to be helpful to a lot of women who struggle with, should I settle? Should I give him a chance? Should I keep to my standards? My clock is ticking. You know, my family's asking me what's going on. Are you, are you even attracted to men? Hey. Like, you know, so a lot, there. Of women, a lot of women are struggling with this and I feel like it's definitely a topic that needs to be discussed. And like I said, this platform is meant for Christian millennials and topics that we just seem to just need to discuss like can we talk about it? can we talk about it so we're talking about it we're talking about it <laughs> so thank you so much for being on the show today uh, i've enjoyed you and i know that the viewers are going to enjoy you as well if you guys have any other questions you can leave them down below in the comment section or you can tweet i've me. always wanted to do this so yeah like, you can do this it. My first time so so <laughs> So if you have a comment or you want to ask Chinesa a question or you want to ask me a question or you want to bring her back on the show to uh, make another video about whatever, just leave the comment below and uh, we will do that, make it happen. And also, I'll also read your comments and feedback would be great as well. This is a new show on my channel. So I am still um, looking for feedback and looking for how I can improve and how I can make things better for you guys as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys on the next show. Bye.